Lancaster as he comes to minister. Amen. Wow, I'm, I was so honored that Randy asked me to be here today. It was a little bit of a surprise to me, but uh, I am delighted to be here on a Sunday morning with you. Um, I do believe that God gave me a word for this house, for this time, for our lives, for the church. How about that? Amen? We, we like it when God speaks to his ministers, right? So, um, and Randy, I'm going to need you at the end to play an old song that you know. I'll, I'll start it off and then you, you'll be able to take over. So if you needed a title, since we didn't have time, because this is a big surprise, so we had to keep everything, you know, hidden from Linda. So this was just a, you know, this is like Mission Impossible. Dun, 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 dun. This, this phone message will self-destruct in 10 seconds. Rejoice in the Lord always, and again, I say rejoice. That's our title today. How can we say that? How can we say, rejoice? How could Paul do this to us? How could he say, rejoice in the Lord always, and again, I say, rejoice? How, how is that possible in the midst of our circumstances? Because we all have circumstances. Yeah. We've we got trials. We, we, we've got chastisement. We've got offenses. We've got, we've got a, a whole political world out there that's being run by the enemy that is, is infringing on our Christianity and our freedoms and, and what we believe and know to be true. You know, they're trying to tell you something, right? There, there's a hurricane happening, and yet Paul says, rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. Now, this is just the title. We haven't even got to the first scripture yet. So, I mean, Psalms 35. Psalms 35. You got it? For his anger is but for a moment. Now, I could have skipped that part, but it's the whole verse here. His favor is for life. Weeping may endure for the night, but joy, joy, joy. Joy comes in the morning. Wow. You know, I, I really don't want to trouble God. I don't really want to get on the wrath side of God. Because uh, I don't think that would be good. But there's this guy. There was this guy. This, this man. This, this God man named Jesus. And he was the chastisement of my peace. He's the one who paid the price that I would get out from under the wrath of God and, and, and under the judgment of God and into the peace. Uh, he made peace between me and God. He, he bridged that whole emotional thing for me. And yet, in, the, in, and in doing so, he gave me his favor for life. God's favor is on me. God's favor is on you. The minute you said, Jesus, I want you in my heart. Oh, my goodness. You have no idea what happened spiritually. You, you were born again, but what that means is it was a clean sheet. Oh, the page turned, as, as Jane said. The page turned, and all of a sudden, there was a new chapter. And, and it hadn't been written except in heaven. God says, I've, I've written out a plan for you that you would walk in it. Just heed, heed my, my word. You know, just, just get an idea which way I'm headed. Listen to the prophets. Listen to the scriptures. Put, get the word in your heart because it'll prosper you. It'll, it'll be a light to your path and a lamp to your feet. It'll guide you, direct you. It won't lead you astray. It'll lead you to the narrow gate where there is one. He is the way, the truth, and the life. And he will let you in. Oh, the promises of God are amazing. But favor is for life. The minute we receive Christ, God's favor is on you, Pastor. His favor makes a way for you. His favor. 
favor picks you up when you're down. His favor keeps your enemies at bay. His favor gives, sends recompense for the things that have been taken away from you. His favor, hallelujah. Somebody get excited about God in here. This isn't a church service. This is a, a, a revival in the spirit in our hearts. We're not, we're not, this is not a, you know, it's not a funeral here. We're not, oh my God, my brother, he's passed away. No. You know, we, we all weep. There's times when the world looks like, oh my goodness, how could that have happened to me? And, and we weep. Someone's ripped out of our lives. We're, we're disappointed so greatly by what life has dealt us. And yet in the midst of that weeping, God says that in the night you're going to be crying, but in the morning. Oh, when the sun comes. When the sun comes. When the sun. And I'm not talking about that sun that comes up. Like I'm talking about when Jesus Christ, the Son of God, comes into the situation. Joy. 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 He restores the years the locust has eaten. I don't know how long the night lasted. I don't know how long the storm lasted. But God says there is a season for everything. The storm and the winds and the waves will cease. The seasons will change. And joy comes in the morning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Romans 5. Romans 5. You know, Paul had something to say about this. He's, he's, he's talking to a church in Rome. He's writing a letter to a people that are under persecution of Nero. The Romans don't much like the Christians. Nero's looking for any excuse to elevate himself and put somebody else down. Sounds like a familiar theme. Someone who wants to elevate themselves and put somebody else down, even at the cost of their lives. He's got to have a scapegoat for the troubles in Rome. And you know, it's those pesky Jews and Christians. They're the problem. But Romans 5 says this. Therefore, having been justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. That's verse 1. Through whom we must have access by faith into this grace which we stand and rejoice. Again, let's throw that in there. Rejoice, and again I say rejoice, in the hope of the glory of God. Hallelujah. And not only that, oh, I love that part. I love it when Paul says, oh, we get to rejoice in the glory of God, that God reached out and saved my life, that he gave me a promise of eternity, that his favor is with me for life. But wait, there's more. I feel like Joel Olstein all of a sudden. But wait, there's more. So, um, <laughs> and not only that, but we also glory in tribulations. How can he say that? How can he say that we glory in tribulation? You know what tribulations are? You know the short English word for that? Trouble. How can you glory in trouble? How can you rejoice in trouble? How is that possible? You just got to look to God. You got to get that. You got to get your eyes off your problems and on the promises. You got to get your eyes off your position and on his position. Amen? Oh, I do feel like Joel this morning. I, I think I've, I got the hands. Everything's going right. So um, this is what he says. That we also glory in tribulations knowing that, see, this is the part that when you're in church, you, you start to figure some of this stuff out. Knowing that tribulation produces perseverance. And perseverance character and character hope now hope doesn't disappoint no because the love of God has been poured out in our hearts by the Holy Spirit who was given to us hope does not disappoint amen I mean perseverance to character you know you look around the room and I see Randy and Linda, and see, I know their story probably better than most of you, because I've known them 20 years. 
I know Jane's story. I know Roger's story. I know a few other people. I know Derek's story. I, I know a few people here, right? I know their story. And what I see in that is perseverance produces character in Christ. And that character produces hope, not for necessarily them, but for me, that I look upon their life and I say, oh my God, if he did it for them, he can do it for me. And there is hope in Christ that by the word of my testimony, and I love my life not unto death, that I will overcome the trials and the tribulations of this world. I will overcome. I have hope. And I have something to give someone. You know, Peter and John were going to church one day, and, and, and they, were, they were, it was an almsgiving service. You know what that is? They were there to give money. They were come to bring an offering to the temple. And it's interesting that they go to the temple, and they meet a beggar on a mat who's a lame man. And you know what's interesting about that? Peter has no money. The guy says, alms? It's an almsgiving service. How come Peter, a good Jewish boy, is going to church with no money in his pocket? How come he's not giving back to God what, he's, what, he's, what God has poured out in his life? Oh, my goodness. He knew what was going on. He knew what he was supposed to do when he got there. And yet, something happened. And he reached in. He see this man, this lame man, and he reaches in his pocket. And uh oh, uh oh, I left my wallet at home. Uh oh, uh oh. But he fixes his eyes upon that man, and the guy looks into his eyes. And in that moment, he says something: "Gold and silver have I none, but what I have, I give unto thee." Oh my goodness, the glory of God. The hope of eternity, the, the healing power of all the services and all the times he'd been with Jesus. Everything, all that anointing poured right through him. He reached out and he grabbed that man's hand right there. And in that moment, that healing power, that dunamis power of God went right through that man into that young lame man. And he picked him up and he stood for the first time in his life because that man was lame from birth. First time. He didn't go home and pray about it. He just did it. See, that's what, that's what equipping leads to. When you're in the moment and you need God right then and there, he is always available. I don't have to wait. In times of trouble, we have hope. Our hope is in Christ, not in my own strength, not in my own understanding, but in God himself who saved me, delivered me, set me free, put the love of God in my heart, not just for me, but for all of you. There is hope in Christ. I can rejoice in trial and tribulation in times of trouble because I know what God did for me. Oh. 1 Peter 1, 6, in this you greatly rejoice. Now for a little while, if need be, you have been grieved by various trials. You know what? Who hasn't been grieved? I mean, who hasn't? If, you've, if you're past eight years old, maybe not even that far, it doesn't take very long, and you've been grieved. And, and then once you have kids, oh, my goodness. Come on. You just thought, wow, I, I, I made it. I raised them up. They're, they're, they're alive. They're going to school. They, they, they're going to church. And then, oh, my goodness, you get a whole other level of prayer. You get a whole, And then, wait, grandkids. You know, God blesses you with a long life. Oh, my goodness, you'll be praying, 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 praying. I mean, you know, that's what it's all about. Praying for your church family. Praying for your family. Praying for your neighbor's family. Praying. Praying in various trials, various tribulations, because there's a hope in Christ. There's a hope. John 16, 33 says, these things I have spoken to you, this is Jesus, that in me you may have peace. In the world you will have a tribulation. Be of good cheer. This is Jesus. Oh, come on. 
He says, be of good cheer, for I have overcome the world. What and where have you put your trust and your hope? Uh, if, if it's like Pastor Randy said, if you put your trust and hope in the stock market, you will be grieved. I'm not saying don't invest. I'm just saying that it will let you down. <laughs> it is no respecter of persons. It is not the place for eternity to put your trust there. Don't put your trust in the bank. Don't put your trust in your car. Don't put your trust in, in this earthly relationship. People will let you down. You know, I know that Pastor Randy is perfect in all of his ways. And, and if you think that you are the sole focus of his attention, if that's what you think, you might be grieved because you are not. Jesus is the sole focus of his intention and his wife and family and the body and all these things that are pulling on him and on Pastor Linda. All these relationships are pulling on them as pastors and leaders. I mean, they have to deal with my stuff, let alone your stuff, because who can I talk to, right? So, you know, I mean, it, 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 it has, it, you can't always say they're going to be be there for me. But there is one who will be there for you. There is one that will never disappoint. There is one that you can rejoice in. There is one that you can put your faith, trust, and hope in. There is one that will never spurn your love. There is one who is a solid rock you can build your house on, that you can build a legacy on, that you can build your family on, that will never Never leave you, never disappoint you, never abandon you. His name is Jesus Christ. He is your Lord, your friend, your Savior. He is your love. He is your true love. Amen? Psalms 28, 7 says this. The Lord is my strength and my shield. My heart trusted in him, and I am helped. Therefore, my heart greatly rejoiced. And with my song, I will praise him. I'll tell you what. Woo! When, when, you, when you see God's hand deliver you out of whatever miry clay you got stuck in, Whatever situation is, oh, man, there's a song that comes up. And if there's not, there's something wrong. I mean, you, you, you got to be going, hallelujah. I mean, I, I, I am so greatly rejoicing. But, you know, I, I love the scripture that says in the, in the Old Testament, says, I look to the hills from whence my salvation comes. I don't know what hill he's coming over. I don't know what minute or hour or day he's coming, but I know this. He's coming. See, I, I have an assurance. I have a promise that he won't abandon me, that he won't leave me, that, that it, I, I might be in this storm. I might be rowing against a contrary wind like the disciples when Jesus was on the mount praying, and he wasn't with them at that moment. But surely in the hour of need, in the, in the blackest of the night, in the darkest hour, when the wind and the waves were in the midst of the tempest at the highest level, who came walking on the water? Where did my hill from my salvation? Where did it come from? Who did I look to? And, and Peter says, if it's you, Lord, bid me come to you. I mean, that's my Jesus. You know, I, I don't know how God does it. I don't know how God does it. I'll give you a practical testimony. I might be preaching for a couple hours. I haven't even got through page one, and there's four more to go. But we'll see. You, I, it's okay if I got an extra five minutes, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. okay. Five, five, I, this guy said five. Okay, there's another 15. I think I'll make it. All right. So here's the deal. Um, I have this job. I'm, um, my day job, like Paul, you know, the tent maker, right? So I've been making tents all these years. I started out as a tile sitter, and then I, God gave me a word, and I got out of, 
actually owning a business to working for other people. And then you're at their mercy a little bit. But then God uses that. And then he gives you promotion. And he fills in background. And, you know, I felt like a one-trick pony. Because I, 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 at one point in my life, I just thought, well, who would hire a tile guy? I mean, what do I have to offer you? What, what could I do for your company? You know? But then God says, well, let me show you what I've put inside you. You know how to deal with people. You know how to deal with problems. You know how to overcome this. You have a good work ethic. I've built these things inside of you as an example. And people value these things. And if you keep going in the direction that I'm going, if you leave your boat, your company, the thing that you built, and get into the vehicle that I have for you, oh, my goodness. So recently, the last three years, I've been working for a Christian company. I love that. I'm surrounded by Christians. We pray at meetings. It's all really, really good. But there was something inside of me that was gnawing away, gnawing away over these last few months. And then I realized it's like, okay, I got my daughter. She's going to high school next year. We drive her. My wife, for the last six months, drove her from Snoqualmie to Bellevue. It's a 35-minute drive each way. And then she's still running two businesses. So she's driving to Bellevue in the morning, dropping my daughter off, and then coming home and working, running the businesses. And then she's driving at 3 o'clock, and then coming home, and then working until 7, 7.30, 8 o'clock at night. And I'm working in Puyallup. And I can't help out. I can't go to school functions. I can't, I don't have that extra time with my family. It's a 10-hour day at a minimum, and most days 12. Travel time, extra time, you know. So I'm like, God, how are you going to change this? How are you going to change this? You know, Lord, I'm just, I don't know, Lord. I mean, you know, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm 62. I'm 62. I mean, where's, who's going to hire a 62-year-old, Lord? You know, they want the 40, they want the guy, the 40-year-old, the 38-year-old that's, you know, got a future in their company. When they're looking at it, they're like, Who, who's going to hire me? What, 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 what can I do? Where, where am I going to go? He said, patience. Persevere. 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 Oh, hey, you, you've had some things come against you at work? Okay. This is what I want you to do. I want you to rejoice. I want you to act like you are on top, you're the top dog. I, wanna act, I want you to act like this is the best place you've ever been. I, I want you to say all the right things and do all the right things. I want you to know that I'm for you and that in me you can trust. Uh, I haven't forsaken you. I'm coming to get you. I'm coming to get you. I'm the way maker. I love that song. You got a chain? He's a chain breaker. You know, you, you, you need saving, he's a way maker. He'll make a way for your salvation every time. So, so what happens? A friend of mine, a non-Christian friend of mine that I reached out to a few years ago, he, he, his son had committed suicide, then he got throat cancer, and God says, well, ask him if he plays golf. That's really Christian, right? Anybody that knows me, like I like playing golf. It's fun for me. I, it's a good stress reliever. I need that. So I did. The guy played golf. It's pretty good. We actually were, we were evenly matched. We became friends. We didn't live very far away. He lived in North Bend. I lived in Snoqualmie. Well, we, we, our time with that company ended. We both went our separate ways. I got him another job. Uh, when he was, he was struggling with where he was at, I got him a job. He, he went to work for some friends of mine, and then I had a headhunter call me about a position. I referred it to my friend. They hired him. They didn't hire him for the position they asked me about. They hired him for a position in North Bend, five miles from my house, as a construction superintendent. Okay. So I'm just going along, and I'm like, okay, God, these last few months, he says, hey, they're going to hire someone else. I told him that you're the man. I told him that you're the man. He goes, I think they're listening. Send me your resume. So then some time went by. I didn't hear anything. I sent the resume in. I didn't hear anything. And then uh, about two and a half weeks ago, on a Wednesday, 
we were talking. We, we usually play golf on Thursday nights. But he called me, and he said, hey, have you heard anything from Greg? And I said, no. He goes, I'm praying for you. My non-Christian friend said, I'm praying for you. I said, now that is Jesus. That's a sign. That's the burning bush. When that thing that shouldn't be on fire starts praying on behalf of me in Jesus' name, oh, my God, something's about to break. <laughs> oh, I know my God is on the move in Jesus' name. The very next day, the regional director called me and said, hey, can you come to an interview? And, you know, I went through that interview. I went through another interview, and I got the job. I start Monday. How many of you guys love that God can make a way? And not only does he just get you, you know, God never trades equal for equal. He doesn't give you a demotion. He gives you a promotion. Come on. So one of the problems that we had was, you know, I, 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 when am I going to be able to have a schedule that will allow me to help? Well, I, I'm a, back to a construction superintendent, so I set my own schedule. So I can either take my daughter in the morning or pick her up at night. Maybe not every day, but I'm going to be able to take that, bear, that part of that burden off my wife. I know she was praying that way, you know. Come on. Come on now. But, but well, what about the other things going on? You know, like the, the lack of insurance. Oh, uh, we have full compensation. We have a retirement problem. We have matching funds. We, we can do all those things for you. Oh, that's just part of the package. Okay, well, what about all that travel? You know, the company that I work for, they didn't compensate me for my time or my travel. Oh, by the way, we're going we're gonna to provide you a brand new truck with a gas card. Oh, but... But what about, what about the cash value? Well, how about a 30% increase? Who is this God? Who am I that you are mindful of me? And you know what? He is no respecter of persons. Come on. Come on. Somebody give him a shout. Because the God of breakthrough is coming for you. I don't know what your circumstance. I don't know what your storm. I don't know what your problem is. But I'll tell you, when you start praising him, when you start rejoicing in the midst of it, when you start, instead of walking in, oh, God, I hate this place, Lord, and you start doing that, when you start, this is the best. I'm going to be the best. I'm going to be the best in God. I love the people I'm with. I love the people that are around me. I wish the best for every single one of them, but I know that God hears my true heart, that I need need something to be able to be the man of God, the husband, the father, the provider that, I, that you've called me to be. And then he makes a way. Yeah, God perfects your prayers. He gives you the desires of your heart. Yeah, yeah he's working on your behalf. Just, just, just take the bull by the horns and start looking at what God's given you. What, is, what, are, what are the people around you? Who, who has God put in your life? They have problems. Have you ever been around people? They have problems. Guess what? You don't have the solution except you have Jesus. Amen? Luke 22, 27 through 29. For who is greater, he who sits at the table or he who serves? Is it not he who sits at the table? Yet I am among you as one who serves. But you are those who have continued with me in my trials. And I bestow upon you a kingdom, just as my father bestowed one upon me. What is the territory that God has given you? What kingdom has God called you into? What area, what, what province, what state, what city, what family, what business? Where has God established you? Look around and see where Jesus can intervene. Who needs prayer? Who has a tragedy? Who lost a son? Who lost a daughter? Who has cancer? Who has a sickness? Who lost a family member? Who, who needs a promotion? What, where, who are you praying for? 
When did you become the one that just sits at the table? No, you need to be the servant. I don't care if you're in management or if you're the leader. When you become the servant, it elevates everyone around you. And God says, now look, that one who is humble is now ready for promotion. Hallelujah. John 13, 12. So when he had washed their feet, taken his garments, and sat down again, he said to them, Do you know what I have done to you? You call me teacher and Lord, and you say, Well, for so I am. If I then, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you ought to wash one another's feet. For I have given you an example that you should do as I have done to you. Most assuredly, I say to you, a servant is not greater than his master, nor is he who is sent greater than he who sent them. If you know these things, blessed are you who do them. Linda, come up here. Please. Yes. Pastor Linda, Pastor Randy, both. Come up here. Just come up here. I just like hugging her. <laughs> that, I did. I did want you to. You know, God sent them to you. No, you might have showed up walking through the doors, but he sent them to you. And they washed your feet daily, weekly, monthly, in the midst of the trial. They stand before God and they labor for you. They are pastors. They are servants. They don't, you know, Randy doesn't show up in a brand new convertible BMW and uh, waltz off to his palace the minute that the doors close, you know, and take his huge salary and go home. No, he labors. He labors. Linda labors. The staff labors. Peggy labors. The worship team labors. They're here joined together fitly in the spirit, in, in, the, in the body of Christ, and they are serving. And I, and I love that. I want to honor that with everything that I am, that I see how hard it is. Many people wanted me to start a church when I left Cedar Park because they thought I was something. And I said, no, no. No, I don't think that's, I don't know if that's in me. There's part of that in me, but I don't know that I'm up to that challenge. This is the hardest job there is, is being your servant. Amen? Amen. God bless you guys. James 1, 2 says this, My brother, encounter all joy when you fall into various trials, knowing that the testing of your faith produces patience. Gee, does that sound like Paul? Didn't we just read that in Romans 5? But let it, patience, have its perfect work, that you may be perfect and complete, lacking nothing. What, what is he saying there? Character. You're going to persevere in that trial. You're going to give me... Count it all joy. I just count it joy. When I when, Why? Because God trusted me that I could make it through this thing. I'm not going to turn tail. I'm going to stand. And above all, I'm going to stand. I, I, don't have to, I don't have to run one way or run the other. God says if you will just stand and put on the full armor of God. And above all, stand. You know, when the wind's really blowing, you see those guys, and they got their microphone, and they're like with King 5 News, and the hurricane's coming in Miami, and the palm trees are bent in half, and they're out there, and stuff's blowing by, and, and they're like staggering, but they could stand in the midst of the storm. Well, that's what it's like to be a Christian. You're standing. So praise God. He's got a plan for your life, and it's a great plan. Just stand and see what he does with it. It's just, it's just it's awesome. 2 Corinthians 7, 4. Great is my boldness of speech towards you. Great is my boasting on your behalf. I am filled with comfort. I am exceedingly joyful in all our, say our, tribulation. Yeah. Wait a second. 
I'm boasting. You know, I, I get to speak at different churches. I, I, I lead a home group on Monday nights. And, and a lot of those people have come down on Fridays and been with you all down here. That's, that's southern Washington, y'all. And, uh, and, and here's the deal. We boast. We boast in what is happening at Gateway. And you look around and you say, well, there's only about 80 of us here today. But we boast in the overcoming. We boast in the salvations. We boast in the people getting spirit filled. We boast in the equipping. We boast in what God does in missions. We boast in those things. We boast in what Pastor Randy and Linda are doing. We boast in the worship that happens here. We boast in the anointing and the presence of God. We boast in those things because our, you're our brothers, you're our sisters. Am I here every week? No, I'm not here every week. But I'm boasting in what God is doing. I'm praying. Some of you are on Facebook. You know, I saw uh, the Kenyan, you know, their, their, their little baby when they're getting out of the car today. And I was a little late. They were a little late. It's all good. And I saw Liz there. And, you know, every time I see Liz, I just think of her, uh, this young girl in here, just, you know, all kinds of trials, all kinds of tribulations. And I just see her heart towards God. God, how are you going to, how are you going to do these things in my life? Where, where is, where is all this coming from? How are you going to make me whole in all this? And then I see her husband are getting married and now they got this baby. That is God. That is something to rejoice in. That is some, that is something mighty that God does in our lives. And we just take it for granted. We just take it for granted. These things are, are, are the way of the, you know, because there's a lot of people getting married, but there's not a lot of people like them. There's not a lot of people like them. And we should rejoice. And we should, as a body of believers, you know, we should, we should be supporting these families. You know, not just them, but there's so many people here that I don't know. You know, I always know Liz because her birthday and mine is the same. And my little sister. Amen. Uh, 2 Thessalonians 1, verses 3 through 5. We are bound to thank God always for you. See, that's me. I'm always thanking God for you. For you. What's going on in this ministry? What's going on in this church? What's going on in your lives? Brethren, as it is fitting, because your faith grows exceedingly and the love of every one of you all abounds towards each other so that we ourselves boast of you among the churches of God for your patience and faith in all your persecutions and tribulations that you endure, which is manifest evidence. Now, wait, what is this the manifest evidence of? Oh, it's the evidence of the righteous judgment of God that you may be counted worthy of the kingdom of God for which you also suffer. Wait, 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 wait. Is, is he saying here in his letter to the Thessalonians that this adversity that we face is directly related to the love and trust and and favor of God on our lives that we stand against the gates of hell and they will not prevail because we have the spirit of God in us and that the rest of us that are here are praying for you and boasting about the glory of God that is manifesting in your lives. Could that be true? Yeah, because if you just swim with the stream, if you just take the broad highway, you take ACDC, the highway to hell, it's easy. The devil will equip you, he'll put a dollar in your pocket, he'll sit you a new car, and he'll just ship you off till that bridge is out. Till everything's gone, the wallet's empty, and, and you're fighting the pigs for a scrap. Yeah, I've been there. Yeah, I've been there. Did that. Yeah, I took the inheritance, squandered it away once. Figured that was not the way to go. And then God gave it all back and more and more and more. And wait, and wait, there was more. Oh, wait, you just got promotion. There's more. Oh, and then when I get in this new place, there'll be more. Will there be adversity? Yeah, there always, there will always be adversity. 
But it will not stop me from praising my Jesus. It will not stop me from glorifying God. It will not stop me from standing in the midst of the storm. It will not stop me from reaching out to the person next to me and pulling them up, pulling them up and pushing them up higher. It will not stop me from being that servant of all. It hasn't stopped the box. They didn't give up and just, oh, this is too much. Randy could have taken any number of other positions, but he didn't stop. Nope. He says, you're worthy. I'm standing in for these folks. I'm going to be their pastor. They believe in me. They trust in me. I'm going to lead them into the promises and then the understanding and the wisdom and the revelation of God. I'm going to link arms with others that are like-minded so that they can see that it's not just me, that there are, you know, like Elijah, that God speaks to him and says, oh, no, I got 70 prophets over here. I mean, there's 700,000 prophets out there. I mean, God has set his church up. It's good. It's good. He's bringing brothers from Africa. He's bringing, he's bringing people from all over just to touch your life. Acts 16, verses 20 through 26. And they brought them to the magistrates and said, These men, being Jews, exceedingly trouble our city. And they teach customs which are not lawful for us, being Romans, to receive or observe. And when they had laid many stripes on them, this is, this is Paul and Barnabas, they, or Silas, and they threw him into prison, commanding the jailer to keep them securely. Having received a charge, he put them in the inner prison and fastened their feet in the stocks. Oh, my goodness. But then comes verse 25. But at midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God, and the prisoners were listening to them, and suddenly, everybody say suddenly, there was a great earthquake so that the foundations of the prison were shaken. And immediately all the doors were opened and just Paul and Silas walked out? Everyone? Does that mean all? Every single person got set free? Who is this God that is exceedingly and abundantly does beyond our expectations. Who is this God that when you are in the, the deepest, innermost, darkest prison, that when you, in the midst of your trial, in the midst of your tribulation, when you've been beaten senseless, when you've been thrown down, when you've been left abandoned in the dark, that you, inside of you, something rises up. And there's others in there that are just as bad, maybe worse, forgotten for years. And guess what happens when you get thrown in with them? The song of the Lord rises up inside of you. And in prayers and in supplications and in hymns and songs of joy, you shout out to God. And everyone in the place sees that you're what rejoicing in the midst of your trial. In the midst of your sickness, in the midst of your financial problem, in the midst of your legal situation, in the midst of your family problem. And they see you dedicating yourself and prostrating yourself before God and, and rejoicing in what God is doing in your life. Oh, oh, and when the earthquake comes, the very foundations of the place are shaken. Their whole world view gets shaken. And not only you get set free, but everyone that is there with you. Amen? What if we just set some people free? What if we just praise God and just try it and see if he's not faithful in this? Maybe we just get up and we say, okay, God, I'm praising you today. I'm praising you in this. I'm praising you in that. You know, I had a friend of mine a number of years ago, Merlin McIntyre, he's been down here a few times, and Merlin was full gospel businessman, and he, he knew this brother from Kenya who was here, and he just, his wife had been praying, his wife had been here for four years to save enough money to get her husband here, so he comes over here, and he gets here, and he's diagnosed with third stage cancer. Oh, wait, wait, wait. 
She's been praying. Finally, God delivers her husband back to her. And he gets here, and he gets diagnosed with cancer. And, you know, they didn't have much hope. <laughs> Third stage, it's like, no, 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 no. You're just one step away from calling the, you know, the mortician. And the Lord, through a, a brother, said, uh, I think maybe it's Jeff Lancaster and Merlin. We were there praying for this brother. We just took time out of our day. We just excused ourselves and took a two-hour lunch. We just made room for this couple. And we are praying for them. And the word of the Lord said, just give him some praise. Just give him some praise. So they took it literally. Can you believe that? And they went home and they played praise music 24 hours a day. And they praised God that they would overcome. They praised God that they were worthy of the trial. They praised God in the midst of their affliction. And they went back to the doctor and... What, what, what do you think our God had to say about it? He, he's un. Satan is under our feet. So, wait, Jesus Christ is the head, and we are the body, and the earth is his footstool. And where is Satan? He's, he's under our feet. Guess what? Healed. Delivered. Set free. Complete, complete, no evidence. That was six years ago. Now their whole family's here. Now they're all praising God in the midst of whatever else is going on in their lives. But he's not dying. And he's not dead, but his faith is overcoming, and we rejoice in the testimony thereof that we overcome by the blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony. And we loved our lives not unto death. And even when we were faced with death, we didn't just, oh, God, oh, beautiful me. Oh, no, Jesus, if I perish, I perish. But I'm praising you. I'm praising you. I'm praising you because you're great and you're magnificent and your promises are true and eternity is a long time. I have a hope and glory and I'll praise you regardless of my circumstance. It doesn't matter how I feel about it. It matters what you said about it in Jesus' name. Come on. Romans 8.35. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or distress, or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or peril, or sword? Who? No one will separate us from the love of God. Philippians 4.4, 4, back to our original premise for this whole message. Rejoice in the Lord always, and again I say rejoice. Psalms 98, 3 and 5. He has remembered his mercy and his faithfulness to the house of Israel. All the ends of the earth have seen the salvation of God. So let's see. Is Tacoma still in the earth? I sometimes wonder. I've, I've heard it said, you know, they said, can anything good come out of Nazareth? Can anything good come out of Tacoma? Something good's got to happen here. Maybe it's you. Maybe we got to get a little praise on, you know? Maybe it's me. I just came down to Tacoma. You know, Jesus said, I, I want you to go to Africa, but you must come through Gateway. <laughs> it's a little out of the way, but I'll go through because you said you must go through Gateway. You know, I just got an invite. Uh, I got an invite for this year. I got an invite last year. I got an invite the year before that. But they're getting smarter. Next year is, uh, I think, the 40th anniversary of my friend Bishop Mambo's ministry. He now has over like 60 churches now. He started out with 12 20 years ago when we first met him. But uh, he wants me to come and be the guy. For the national conference. And I said yes. Not because I have the money. Not because I have the time. I'm starting a new job. But I know that God's going to make a way. I haven't been there in six years. It'll be seven years next year. Almost eight years. So I know that God.
God will make a way because my heart is willing and I felt it in my spirit. And I said, you know what? Next year I'm going to Kenya. I'm going to bring a team with me. It's going to be dynamic. It's going to be apostolic. There's going to be healing and deliverance and songs and glories and there will be testimonies. You know, I want to know what God's doing today. I don't care so much. You know, yes, yesterday's miracles are today's ashes. I want some new miracles. I don't know about you. But I love it when Jesus touches people. Amen? 2 Corinthians, and we're winding up here. We're winding up. So I'm going to need Randy in about ooh, two verses. I'm going to have to have you up there on the keyboard, brother. 2 Corinthians 8, 1 through 3. Now, this is a setup, so just know this. I'm going to tell you ahead of time, just be prepared. If you don't know this scripture, I'm speaking something to you. Moreover, brethren, we make known to you the grace of God bestowed on the churches of Macedonia that in great trial and affliction, the abundance of their joy and in their deep poverty abounded in the riches of their liberality. For I bear witness to this day, Paul is giving glory to that church. To this day, that glory is resounding throughout the earth. To this day, their sacrifice is like a trumpet call to the church of God. To this day, we give testimony to those faithful ones. And I says here, for I bear witness that according to their ability, yes, and beyond their ability. Come on. Somebody give me an amen. They were freely willing. Willing to do what? Willing to support Paul. You know, today's Linda's birthday. And I know that you love Linda. How many of us have said, oh, Linda, I love you. Well, let's, let's do something to show Linda that. You know, like a little kid, if you show up at an eight-year-old's birthday party, and you say, honey, I love you, and you get the card, from grandma, and then that little eight-year-old opens it up, and it just says, I love you, grandma. It doesn't feel like it. You were expecting that dollar in there. You were expecting something. You expected something. If you had a birthday party with no cake, oh, I love you, honey. Here's your card. No cake, no party, no friends, no dinner. How does that feel? Let's show Linda that we love her. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to ask an usher, some, oh, we don't even need an usher. Just come up here. Linda, come on up here. I brought, I brought a, a party present. See, Randy didn't buy those flowers. I bought those flowers. M my wife gave me permission to buy these beautiful. She says, don't go cheap, Jeff. Get something nice. I know. I love Maria, too. So come up here. Come on up here. So um, I want you to come up here. If you got a dime, if you got 50 cents, if you got $20, if you want to go extravagant, you want to write a check, you want to do something, just come up here and put it right up here on the podium, stack it on top of this word right now. We're not done yet. We got one more scripture, and then Randy and I are going to lead you in some praise and worship. We're going to finish this thing off, but let's do something to honor our pastor. If you didn't bring anything in today, then you need to bring something later on in the week and just give her a little love gift. There's a bucket. Oh, yeah, you can throw it in the bucket. There's my brother's. There's envelopes. If you don't want to do that, you can always do that. So do something. Send them out. Let her get something fancy. Let her just bless her, you know? It doesn't have to be. If everybody here gives a dollar, they're going to have a nice night out somewhere, right? So come on. It doesn't have to be much, and you don't have to have, you, you know, God will do something exceedingly and abundantly because why? Because we love her, right? Because we love her. I know, I know, if you'd known, right? So, I don't like double offerings. Even when I'm an evangelist, I forget. You know, the church gets an offering, and then I forget to take one, and they all know that. But, but for her, I'll take an offering. Amen? Amen. Amen. So, Randy, if you'll come up to the keyboard, and I'm going to finish with this last scripture here. It says, Psalms 98.4. Psalms 98.4, shout, you're dismissed. Thank you. Let me escort you.
let me, let me, let me, let me just right here, not dismissed, but seated at the head. There you go. Thank you, brother. Yeah, just, just put that word. Yeah, you forgot your, your present there. Okay. So, <laughs> 98, four. Shout joyfully to the Lord, all the earth. Break forth in song. Rejoice and sing praises. Sing to the Lord with the harp and with the harp and sound of a song. Hallelujah. You know, I don't know what's going on in your life. But I know something's going on. I mean, there's... I just got a promotion, but is there still things going on in my life? Yep, yep, there's still things going on in my life. There's still family members that need to get saved. There's still family members that need healing. There's still family members that need deliverance. There's still church members that are just full of problems. I, I mean, just take the lead in a, in a Monday night Bible study, and you'll find yourself pastoring a flock of people that have problems. Guess why? Because people have problems. Amen? And and as the Spirit of the Lord leads, God has answers. And you see those things being fulfilled in people's lives. So, I wrote, I didn't write this song. <laughs> I wrote down a song that God put on my heart. So you, and, and, and I'm going to save you guys, <laughs> I'm going to save you guys the honor of my tonally challenged vocalistics. You like that? But there's this song called, Look What the Lord Has Done. Because I don't want to just go into mystic, and I don't want to go slow and, no, I want some joy. Come on, we got to rejoice. You know, we, we got to get a little something going on. I mean, we got to stand up and shout. Hallelujah. Come on. Oh, the Lord has done. Look what the Lord has done. He healed my body. He touched my mind. He saved me just in time now. I'm going to pray for his name. This is just the same. Come on and praise him. Look what the Lord has done. Come on. Look what the Lord has done. There you go, sister. Look what the Lord has done. Hoo, hoo, hoo. He healed my body. He touched my mind. He saved me just in time. Well, I'm going to praise his name. Jesus is just the same. Woo! Come on Praise him. Look what the Lord has done. Look what the Lord has done. Look what the Lord has done. He healed my body. He touched my mind. He saved me just in time. Now I'm going to praise his name. Jesus is just the same. You know the place him. You know the Lord has done. Enemies can't. The Lord has done. Look what the Lord has done. Heal my body. He changed my mind. He saved me just in time. Oh, I'm going to praise his name. Woo! Just the just the same. Look what the days. Look what the Lord has done. Now we're not done because I went to the enemy's camp and I took back what is stole from me. Yes, I took. Back what is stole from me? Yes, I took back what is stole from me. Yeah, I went to the enemy's camp and I took back what is stole from me. You say under my feet, Satan's under my feet. Satan is under my feet. Come on, my feet. He's under my feet. Satan is under my feet. Woo! 
So I don't know what's going on in your life. But you know what? God's timing is perfect. It's 12 o'clock. I knew what that means. It's time to pray. See, I don't, I, don't, I don't go with this, just shut the door and go get the chicken bucket. Let's get up here and let's bring our trials, our tribulations, our needs, our sicknesses, our troubles. Let's bring them right up here to the altar of God. Let's lay it on the altar and let's allow the fire of God to come down. Because I don't got nothing. I don't got nothing but Jesus. Gold and silver have I none. But what I have, I give unto thee. Unto thee. Just receive it right now. I don't know what you need, sister. But right now, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, fill her, Lord. Fill her, Lord. Fill her, Lord, right now. More, God. More, God. More, God. From the top of her head, down to the bottom of her feet, from Sunday to Monday, in Jesus' name. In Jesus, in Jesus, fill her, Lord, fill her, Lord, fill her, Lord. My sister over here, hallelujah, right there, right there, Jesus, Jesus, strength, health. Dolores says you've been praying for, uh, I see a, a, a grandchild, and uh, hmm, seems like it's a boy. Do you, have, do you have a Philip in your family? No? No? No Philip. Hmm. Jesus. But you do have a grandson that you've been praying for. Brian. Okay. All right, Lord. Right now, in Jesus' name, the power of God, the revelation of Christ in his life, the revelation of Christ, set him free, Lord. Jesus. Jesus. I thank you for my sister. Thank you for her prayers, oh God. Thank you, oh God, that you're ministering in her life. Through her, the power and the might of Christ. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Peggy, I just want to say when I came in today and you were on the, the worship team, I said, who's that? Because you were glowing. How many years have I known you? And I just went in and I went, who's, who's that? Is there somebody new up there? And I don't know, but there's a new, it's a new day, and I don't know what page turned, but I just want to praise God, because that was some real joy in Jesus' name. That was some real joy. Amen. Father, I just lift up my sister right now. I just release, release anointing and joy and power in the Holy Spirit right now. Jesus' name. Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Jesus, 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 Jesus. Thank you for my sister, Lord. She's here at the altar. Will you perfect everything that concerns her? Everything that's close to her heart. She's just bringing it to you right now, God. You are the way maker, Lord. You are the way maker. Just release. Release. You set the captives free, God. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. There it is. Woo. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Wow, wow. That's the peace of God. The peace of God entering into that situation. Jesus. I just, I just, I just see God just releasing peace into a strife-filled relationship. I don't, I don't know what that is, but I just see God just bringing peace in that thing and restoring your peace. The anxiety is leaving. We're kicking it out. Fear is leaving right now in Jesus' name. Shut up, ba 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 Jesus. You know, I God just con, just con, I just got a confirming word, and 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 I just want to set this up. God, God's I had this incredible prophet speak to me once, and this was what his word to me was. Oh, 
you are a friend of God. And the Lord just spoke to me and he just said, the joy of the Lord is your strength. And so you've had these times in your life where you've just like felt like you've got, you know, sucker punched. And and that song is like, oh, so this message to you was like, oh, this is a reminder. This is like, oh, this will be like the bear and the lion that David, he looked at his staff and he said, okay, that's where you were, God. That's where you were, God. And this new trial will be just like that in Jesus' name. And as, as you just allow God the joy and the things that are joyous to you in your life, family and relationships and the gems, the jewels that God's placed in your life, and you look at those and you're going to say, okay, God, I'm coming through. I'm coming through. Amen. I just release uh, favor, uh, uh, an abundant favor, favor like a shield and a buckler before him, God, to take the buffeting blows, Lord. And I just see that uh, you're just going to take the hidden the hidden things and be made manifest in Jesus' name, that you're, you're breathing on the fog and clearing the path in Jesus' name. And you're going to shine your light even in the midst. It's going to be, the night will be like a bright day. And all those around you will see that the Lord is with you. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Woo! Jesus. <laughs> Hallelujah. I just see a river overflowing uh, the log jam and it's it's literally like the river of God is just breaking free in your life and I don't know uh, when you when you realize the Holy Spirit had that much but there is a lot more he says and I am moving in you and through you and and just allow that release to continue and those things that have, have kind of Block the power and the release of God in your life are going to be removed in Jesus' name. He, he, he removes the logs and log jam. He is the Holy Ghost. <laughs> he is the Holy Spirit. And, and he's literally, I see him literally removing those things in Jesus that the river of God can flow through you in worship, in song, in prayer, in the Spirit, in, in relationships. In every area of your life, it will affect every area of your life. Like a flood affects everything around it in Jesus' name. The river of God overflowing in you in Jesus' name. I just release it right now. Release it right now. Jesus. Oh, shanama River of God. River of God. Flow. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Wow. 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 <laughs> you know, you got uh, like a black t-shirt on, and uh, I just saw this thing. I... And you're tall, but you're not nearly as tall as uh, God's going to make you. Um, and he said, I'm, I'm just making you a billboard <laughs> that, that all that go by you, everyone that goes by you will say, oh, he's with Jesus. He's with Jesus. And you don't have to have a road sign. You just have to be you. <laughs> you just have to be you and allow God to work through you in Jesus' name. And the things that trouble you, the things that you're like, oh, God, i got to get past this, or i got to get through this, or I can't live with this anymore. God's going to remove the things that need to be removed, and he's going to put in and build and plant the things that need to be there in Jesus' name. Amen? Amen. And uh, Jeremiah said, say not that I am too young. <laughs> say not that I am too young. You know, God is prophetic anointing. God chooses whom he chooses. Amen? And he's going to use you if you allow him in Jesus' name. Father, I thank you for my brother.
for this young man, for his heart for you, that he's here. I thank you that he's here at the altar. Let the fire of God fall on him in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, right now, Lord. Your fire, a fire in his belly that just burns, that burns, that burns, that burns for you in Jesus' name. More, Lord, more, Lord, more, Lord, more, Lord, in Jesus' name. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh my God, hallelujah. You know, uh, as, the, as the swallows return, as the swallows return, the Lord says, and, and they just have joy. You just watch them. You can watch them for hours, and as they swoop, and they twirl, and they swift, and, and they, they, they just look like they are just so joyful. That is what the Lord has says, that you are going to be in the spirit, in him, that you will be like those soaring, 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 never tiring, never tiring, never tiring in the spirit. Labor of love, says the Lord. Labor of love, says the Lord. Jesus, Jesus. Labor of love, says the Lord. Jesus, 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 Jesus. Okay, my sister. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Jesus, Jesus. I just release strength, healing. Oh my God, oh my God. The love of God in Jesus' name. I just see you like that. That golden apple on a silver platter. And God just is like, oh, look at her shine. Look at her shine. This little light of mine. Hallelujah. 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 Jesus, Jesus. I just release the fire. The fire. The fire. Jesus' name. Jesus' name. Jesus' name. Hey, brother. Thanks for working back there today. Appreciate that. Father, I just I just lift up my brother to you, Lord. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Uh, you know, I, I just sense in you that uh, God's saying that the, like the spirit and the mantle of Joseph is on you. And, and that's not easy because it hasn't been easy for you. Uh, rejected, rejected. And, and turned away, but the, the purposes of God ever set before you, and just as in Joseph, God is preparing you to be raised up to a level that you can't, you can't orchestrate. It's sort of like the thing that happened to me. You, you can't, you couldn't have planned it, you couldn't have written it out yourself, but God is writing a script for you that is better than what you can think or imagine. Um, He's the author and the finisher in Jesus' name. And, and I just see that there is a, uh, wow, there, there's a, just a promotion in the spirit that's going to come in, in a major way in your life. And um, you're like, how did I get here, Lord? How did I get here? And uh, that just comes from having a heart towards God. And uh, people that are, make themselves available, people that make themselves like, okay, God, well, you want me to run that? Or you want me to do this? Or you want me to do this over here? And then all of a sudden God says, ta-da. And that's who I was. I was just a guy. I was just a catcher in revival services. I wasn't even a member of the church. Next thing you know, I'm, I'm a youth pastor. Next thing you know, I'm doing missions. Next thing you know, I'm preaching in different churches. I, I didn't ask for it. I was like, how did, who am I? You know, just a tile guy from Snoqualmie, man. So, so God can do great things. That's why I'm telling you. It's like, don't look at you, look at him. And when you do that, these things come to you. They just, they just happen. You just, you just walk into them. In Jesus' name. I thank you for my brother. What's your name? Kyle. Lord, I thank you for Kyle. I thank you for who he is. I thank you about for where you're going to take him, Lord. I thank you that he's a friend of this house that your ministries that you have for him, oh God, the witness that is in him will be powerful in Jesus' name, that it'll be a tangible thing in Jesus' name, that you draw men unto him because of the, 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 the spirit of God that is within him in Jesus' name. Jesus, 
God, just protect him and keep him. Order his steps, oh God. Let the peace of God be with him wherever he goes. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Yeah, there's just a real, a real priestly mantle on you. And how God uses that, I don't know. But I'm just saying that there's a calling that you haven't quite walked into. You can't. You're not going to see it, but God's about to reveal some things in your life. So as you just keep looking, okay, what's mountain coming over? When is that word going to come? As you see those things happen in your life, you're going to see God all of a sudden go, oh, wow. Wow, where did that robe come from? And and, and you're going to know, oh, that is that which was spoken in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Hey, sister. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I just, I just release more over my sister. Just see her, her prayers manifest right before her, oh God. Right before her, I just, you, just, you just see those things that she calls that are not as though they are. As she prophesies over these situations, Lord, that you just honor her word because of the wisdom and the revelation of God that flows out of her mouth. The, the spirit of wisdom and the spirit of revelation that flows through her and out of her in Jesus' name. That chains break, that chains break, that, that sickness flees at the sound of his name, at the sound of his mighty name, saith the Lord, in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. 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 